Hi everyone, it's Beverly Cole, but you can call me Bev. If you recall a couple of videos ago, I showed you how I had added a pattern to my bunny with a collage and also with this beautiful background that I got from the Graphics Fairy. Well, I went ahead and made some freebies for you guys. Uh, I believe there's three of them on my coffee page or Kofi or however you say it. And so I'm going to show you some things that I made with that so that you have a few ideas, uh, or I'm sure you can think of other things as well, but they just keep popping into my head. They don't seem to pop into my head all the time. Usually early in the morning, <laughs> I'll lay there for about an hour and uh, just in the quiet and think, and things just come to me. Um, does that happen to you? It happens to me. So I wanted to show you the first thing that I did make is a card. And I want to show you, I'm going to do another one and show you how I hinge this card together so that it opens nicely and the front of your card still stays nice and flat. So the inside of this one has the uh, outline of the bunny, but I'm going to show you another way to make this card. And I ink the edges. You know, I use uh, either free burlap or I, on some of these I used worn lipstick. Distress oxide because I brought my oxides. That's what I brought. I didn't bring my regular ones. Can't bring everything. So then I also made, okay, besides the card, George found this little stick stuff in our um, fan this morning, so it was perfect timing for me. I made this little card that, you know, you can stick it in a plant like, like this, you know, stick it in a plant, especially at Easter time. You know, we love to get plants for mom or grandma or, you know, sister, whatever. And so you can make this little card and you can stick it in there. And here I used the worn lipstick and just wrote on the bunny. Okay, and I attached it with some Fabri-Tac, which seemed to work fine. That was a little stick George found in our fan. The other day he found a whole bunch of them when we were hooking up. They were in our hitch. Uh, he said, I knew they were building a nest out here. And he pulled out this handful of little sticks. And I was just like, oh, the cute little cuties. You know, they were built. They were bluebirds all around us. And I said to him, I know you don't really want to hear about them being the little cuties, but I think they're just adorable. They were more annoying to him than cute. <laughs> okay, so besides the card, I also made a couple of um, place cards. I do have a sheet of the place cards for you with the little white bunny and this perfect uh, three, I think it's three and a third of all things, 3.3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, as long as it's a square and you can just fold it in half and I inked the edges and this is that same background only smaller so you can see this is actually wallpaper design you can see part of it in this but um so the, I made two of those two because this one is made uh, the way I originally had planned it where you'd write the name on the bunny but then I'd have another sheet where you're getting a variety of bunnies okay this is just floral bunnies you're gonna get a couple sizes and I cut one of those out and then just cut a square of white cardstock and folded it and inked it. And then you could put the name on the white and then leave the bunny that way. So, you know, you're gonna get both sizes of bunnies and 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 uh, yeah, and you can also get the one to make the card. So you get the big bunny. Um, I didn't include this uh, that I'm making here with you in a minute, but I, I, I'm, now that I came up with the other idea this morning of, um, what you could do with this. I'm like, maybe I need to make one of those sheets up for you guys too. But then I also added um, a, a patterned bunny and a white bunny layered, um, you know, kind of askew. Um, and then made this into a tag. So of course, any of these things you could use in a, in a scrapbook, you know, you could put, I mean, in a yeah, junk journal, put this in as a, a, a writing, a, a you know, drilling spot, uh, make this and at it somewhere. There's so many things and I'm sure this bunny will show up again in some of my videos. But I made this tag just to offset the bunnies and then write, you know, your little message and you can tie this onto anything. You could put this on a plant as well, you know, if you want to just tie it around the bottom of the tulip or whatever or whatever. It, and this is one of those green fibers that I had, all those fibers that I showed you guys. Yeah, one of them. So I'm glad I had those fibers with me. And then, so then, what I want to show you is making this card where I have the bunny the opposite way. And this morning I was sitting here and I was thinking, you know, 
if you gave this to a grandkid, you know, like if you made their place, place um, card, you know, big like this and put it on their plate or whatever and wrote their name on here, they could color the back because the design is on the back. So, you know, that's always fun too. Say maybe you go out for uh, Easter dinner, maybe you go to a country club or a restaurant when you're with grandkids, you're visiting them. You can bring these for them, you know, with some crayons or whatever, markers, and they can do this while they're waiting to order or whatever. You know, sometimes they even give you the crayons. Most of the time, I think they give you the crayons. And when I cut these out, I'm gonna cut this one out to show you how I put it together. I always watch the outside white, not the black line, because I want to leave the black line there. I don't want to cut it off. But sometimes if I'm looking at that black line, I end up cutting it. So I always look at where my scissors are, which is in the white, not in the black. You know, I don't want to leave a lot of white. And if you leave a little, you just ink around the edges. It's not a big deal. Okay, so remember, this bunny is the opposite. Opposite. Like their butts are up to each other or their faces are each other facing each other. So I cut off these little curly cues because these are designs that I had done where I can, you know, layer them in, in GIMP or whatever. And sometimes I leave the little curly cues, but I'm cutting them off. They're just a little bit too much um, work for me <laughs> and they can break off. So, I mean, these ears are pointy and they're cute anyway. So I'm just going to cut that white off. Take my time. Now, I'm not going to color him or shade him or anything I could, but because of the way I'm doing this card for a grandchild or anyone else that likes to color, <laughs> I would be included in that group. I am not going to bend the front. I am not going to mess up this to attach it and bend it. I'm going to bend the back. So let me just get a little ruler on my squeaky drawers. And I'm going to bend it. Oh, let me get this the way I want it. Okay. I'm going to bend this one up. So we're going to just measure across because you want to bend every, you want to glue everything above that bending line. Okay. And you want the line where the glue will be to be straight. So I, I use my ruler and I just, I, I, or you could use a, you know, you could use a, what do you call it? Um, a scoreboard, or I could use my paper trimmer to do that too, like it were, as if it were a scoreboard. But right now I'm finding that sitting here, I am just <laughs> looking for something. Ah, okay. A stick. I got a stick. I want to bend this up. So, uh, yeah, a stick or, gee, I didn't even know I had this stick in there. I could have used this for a stick into a plant too. It's a little fat, but okay. So here, okay, this is bent. And then I'm going to press it flat. So you're going to use, you know, like I said, your scoreboard and you could use your um, bone folder, blah, 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 all that. But you want it straight across and it bends back because when I attach it to this card, which is the front, We'll see what happens. So I'm going to just now glue, put glue all over this. I might need you to turn the color on. Right now? No, on, the, on this AC. I'll let you know. Okay. I'll tap, put that on. And then you want me to turn this AC on? Does it matter what it's set on? Okay. Having a little trouble with my glue, as usual. I think I need to clean the tip out of this glue. You know, let me see if I have something else I can use in the meantime, because this is taking time. George is going to need my help in a moment, so I might disappear and come back. That's okay, right? Let me see if this, this is my uh, Fabri-Tac. 
<laughs> oh my goodness, this one's not working either. You know what it is? It is, oh my goodness. It is, um, oh goodness, okay. It's getting stuck, it's getting thick, and I need to add some, um, you know how to make it on thick, right? It's acetone based, so all you have to do is add some acetone. Shake it up, shake it up, and you will have a thinner Fabri-Tac or whatever fabric beacon name you have. They're all pretty much the same as far as I can tell. All right, so that is glue, right? So I'm going to place this one on top because I want this one to look especially nice. It's the front, make sure it's covering everything, make sure it's straight. And then I just rub where that glue is. Well, my ears are a little bit off, but I can trim those if I want to or work at getting them super straight. Okay, so here's the back of the card, right? And here's the front of the card. And see how it's still nice and flat? Isn't that awesome? And then when they open it, all of that bends open. Give it a nice, you know, but even then, the whole front is flat. And beautiful okay how cute is that so to make this for a grandchild I would just not eat the edges first of all because you know when kids are eating or they're at the table they get their fingers sticky all that ink will come off on your fingers and that's not fun so don't ink it when it's for a kid but then they open it up you can write your message in there and on the back they can color it and it's Easter Right? So isn't that fun? Yeah. So um, let me know if you're interested in making one of these for the, with the back like this, and I will get into my Kofi or coffee page. I gotta find out how to say that right, and uh, download that for you. Okay. Let me know because you know Easter's right around the corner. Okay. That's how. Now the other thing I wanted to show you also is how to shade this bunny. Okay. I'll show you on this one. How about we do that? I use my Prismacolor pencils, but you can use anything that you want. But what, I'm just gonna show you where I put shadows. So I'm gonna use some pinks. Okay, maybe a little bit of this. This is These are my favorite pencils and they match the Prismacolor markers. They're not refillable markers, but they're my favorites. And usually in an art supply store or online, you can buy them separately. So you can buy them in a set. If you're running out of some, one color because you love it so much, you can replace it. This is Spanish orange, which was one of my favorite colors. And I don't have my pencil sharpener out yet. I should, but magenta. And this is pink. So I'm gonna use um, these three colors. Now the opposite of red is green. So if you wanted to, you know, have the two colors pop, um, and there are also the colors in these cards. So these are the colors I chose. This is uh, apple green and lime peel. Doesn't that sound delicious? So I'm gonna start with the pinks, and the first thing I'm gonna do is make his eye pink. So I'm gonna just color that in lightly. I'm not pressing hard at all. I mean, I'm just lightly um, doing this. And I usually work in little circles when I shade, when I color. And I'm putting the color where I think there would be a shadow. And I don't overthink it. I just put it, you know, wherever I think there might be a shadow, like back behind the ear. You know, maybe in between the ears. And pink is a great color because, you know, not only does it go with the flowers, but it's the color we think of when we think of bunnies. White and pink, don't we? Don't we? I think we do. So here, everywhere I put a little line when I drew him, where there might be a fold, like down here, his little, there might be a shadow, you know, behind here. And I'm, like I said, I'm, I, I'm not pressing very hard. Just a little shadow, okay? And then in here, because you know, he's fluffy. He's a fluffy bunny. You know, back in here. My fingers are such a mess. I really do have to apologize to you guys because working at that house, I was working with a bucket of water and I don't like to wear gloves. So I had cleaner in a bucket. I had Mr. Clean erasers. I had rags. I had towels that, you know, you can clean windows with and they leave the windows 
so nice. And I don't, I didn't get the expensive ones. I got these on Amazon, like 15 of them or something. Um, but you can clean windows with them and, you know, just with water. And you don't ever want to wash them. I think it tells you, you don't want to wash them with like um, fabric softener, stuff like that. It, they're just made for cleaning windows and things that, you know, I use them on my stove. And they're not, they're not, uh, f uh, oh, what's that kind of, uh, microfiber. They're not microfiber. They are something else, but they're nice. And I have one in my shower. I use it when I clean my shower glass. Better than a squeegee, easier than a squeegee. Okay, so here's how I would, you know, put the little bit of shading in, right? Because, you know, if you like to color, this is a fun thing. You don't have to really color the whole thing in. And I'm not, like I said, don't press hard. And then I, on top of that magenta, I would add some green to make that um, shady, more shady colors. They, it dulls, it kind of dulls it down when you add the opposite color on the color wheel. It will dull down the color. So I do that for the shadows, not for his eye. I want his eye to stay really nice, really nice and bright pink. But these are shadows, and this way they go really nicely with your background. So if you, you know, are so inclined and you love to color, you can do this to your bunny. This is the other way of doing it. You know, it doesn't have to be a grandkid. Grand <laughs> <laughs> coloring because I love to color I love to color I love to cut I mean you know if you're a crafter I love to rip tear make a mess that's me so yeah if you're into the coloring thing do it and I don't you know now you could also go in with like a um I brought one either a blending pencil or a blending marker Maybe they're in my special bag when you look. Hmm. I'm looking. I've got this. We could use that. So let's talk about that. Paper stump. Okay, there's a paper stump. And you can blend with the alcohol. You blend the colors. But you probably already know you can do that. So you put some alcohol on here. Let me go get my alcohol. my alcohol 91 percent oh, open that up and I don't know if you know this you can also refill your blending pens with alcohol instead of you know bu buying expensive stuff and then you can blend the colors and the alcohol dries quickly George is up on the roof doing stuff. So if you hear machinery, that's what it is. When you live in an RV, there's always something, something to adjust, something to fix. Need a little bit more alcohol on my paper stump. So paper stump, a paintbrush, you know, but I like the paper stump because you can scrub with it and you don't want to scrub hard because you know, you know how paper is. It'll just ball right up. I'm just kind of lightly going over these and the alcohol blends the colors. For some of you, I know this is nothing new, but keep in mind what we're doing here. You know, we are creating special things for either a baby party, a baby shower. You could use this for a kid's birthday party, bunnies for Easter party. Uh, so many things. Okay, so here you can see how I blended. 
So yes, even would be cute if this bunny was made out of a vintage color, you know, like an off-white or even a light pink and you could still, let's just do some fun coloring up through here too. For some reason I put stripes on his ears. If you look at my vintage rose and some of my other things that are still out there that I've used, um, you, you'll notice I add a little curly cues, stripes, that's just part of my style. Okay, so there we go. There it is. This is the one that your grandkid could color, the back, and I showed you how to make that. Okay, now something else I want to show you, okay, I talked in the other video about how I wanted to show you how I make those bubbles, okay? And I did try making one because I did. I usually make these on a piece of um, on a piece of um, Yupo paper because you can color on Yupo and then you can do this. Well, I tried it on a piece of this is deli paper, and it came out. It, it hardens and then you can peel it off, but it also kind of is dull on the back. So it's shiny, but it's kind of wonky. And I don't know if that's because, it's probably because of my, my Nouveau drops. My Nouveau drops are pretty old. So they've thickened a bit, okay? So I'm, I thought, well, what else can I do it on? Because I wasn't really happy with that. Because you want to do it on something where you're going to be able to peel it off. But you also have to be able to color on it. And this is why. I'll show you. I just did these three this morning and they're not quite done. So let me show you. This is a cover from Sour Cream, any kind of container cover that's plastic. I tried doing it on foil from like a coffee can, you know, the foil that you take out of your coffee can. I'll show you what I mean. Or yogurt, you know, these kind of things. Didn't work on those. I couldn't color on that. It was kind of like just digging into it. You have to be able to color. So. Then I was wondering if it would work with regular colored pencils because when I did the other ones on my cards, I used watercolor pencils. So of course you can use watercolor pencils and it works great. But I did try using my Prismacolors. So all I did was color and I like to make them look interesting by using more than one color, you know, like a rainbow, which is really, really fun because, you know, you don't really get that effect if you make a drop with Nuvo drops or stickles. I don't know if stickles would work. I, I love stickles, but I've never tried doing this with them. So then I just take one of my little sponges and I wipe away lightly, I wipe away the crumbs of paint. Then I took my Nuvo drops and make sure they're coming out good. And then I just, you know, made that dot on top, up and down. Maybe sometimes you might have to do that kind of thing. And then because mine are so thick, if yours are newer, or of course, um, what's the other thing you can use? Uh, uh, anything that dries clear like this. I should try it with glue. I think the glue would be too bendy though, I'm not sure. Okay, so I did this because mine are so old that I want it to get flatter, okay? Now these uh, are gonna take a, you know, a while to dry. You wanna, you wanna just wait, you know till it's completely dry. And I always put it somewhere where I'm not gonna mess them up. And with me, I've got an extra thing to worry about. I've got JJ, he's always getting into my stuff. Well, right now he's sleeping. Right now he's sleeping on the chair. Hi, baby boy. Okay, so that's that. And when those are dry, um, I will peel those off and I will be able to, you could add them to the cards. You know, where's that other one that I made that I wasn't happy with? Mm, where did it go? Well, anyway, to, to add it to the card, you're just going to take another drop of your Nuvo drops and just make a tiny drop and then press that on there and it'll stay. Um, when these are dry and I put them on the cards, I will show you somewhere, Instagram or in another video or maybe in a short. That would be a good idea. That's what I'll do. Okay, so go ahead and look for your freebies and happy Easter. See you next time. Okay. Bye-bye.